All right. Now what we're going to do is basically just package up each of these areas. So get user choice, get computer choice, um, check if there's a tie, check if there's a win, and then for the else, we don't need to package up into a function. But that's what we're going to do here. Okay. So let's define get user um, choice. Okay. It's not going to take in an input, but it will return a value. And in here, I'm just going to say, whoops, here's going to be a local copy of this variable. Okay, so I'm going to call it underscore user. Oh, um, why did I put it below the print statement? Okay, so let's move this around a little, sorry. Okay. So I want to get the user choice. And so what I'm doing is I'm asking them to enter one of these, but then I'm going to do a little loop here. And I'm going to say while, right, uh, that underscore user, hmm, yeah. So while the underscore user is not equal to rock and underscore user not equal to paper and um, underscore user not equal to scissors. So if they did not choose any of the valid options, okay? So in other words, they did not choose rock and they did not choose paper and they did not choose scissors, then I'm going to say print that was not a valid selection. Um, case and spelling matters. And then I'll just ask for the same thing again, right? I'll just ask for the user choice. And if they end it wrong, I'll trap them in the loop. And as soon as the loop is over, let's return the user choice. Okay, so we get the user choice. So now here, all we do is say user equals get user choice. Okay, let's test it really quick. So I'll say uh, greet the player. So here's our main body of code down below the functions. Okay, so all I do is call in this function to get the user input, which asks them once, and as long as they correctly do it, skips the loop and returns what they entered. But if they didn't enter something correctly, it traps them. So let's see if it works. So I'm going to just put in some letters. That was not valid. Put in some more. That was not valid. Put in some more. And then let's say rock, and boom, it works. Okay, so we got the user choice. Now let's do the same thing for def get comp choice. Okay, again, it doesn't need to take in any input. I've already imported the random module up here. So all I'm going to do down here is take all the code that selected a random selection for the computer. And I'm going to put it up here inside this. And then we'll just tab it over. Now the only difference here is instead of setting comp equal to, I'm going to return that value, right? And else if it was one, instead of setting the comp, I'm going to return that value. And instead of setting this, I will return it. So this function will either return rock or paper or scissors, just like this one will. And then down here, we simply set comp equal to get comp choice. Right? Again, let's test it. So let's say rock, and there we go, seems to work. Let's get paper and scissors came up. So yeah, all seems to work. So we just took the same code and we packaged it up inside here. And then what you can do is collect this little collapse. And now the def get user choice and get comp choice are up above. So here we'll say randomly selects um, either rock or paper or scissors to return okay and then down here we'll say um, keeps asking um, for user choice until they enter rock paper or scissors okay so really clear instructions on what those are um, i'm going to move this comment to right here so we've got okay so here's where we import stuff i'll create some empty space here's where we define our functions okay then we greet the player we get a user choice get a computer choice 
Um, I'm still printing these. I'm going to delete this later. This is just uh, for debugging purposes only. Delete later. Okay. Now check if there's a tie. Again, I'm going to make this a function. It's a very simple function, right? So I'm going to just call this check tie. And I'm going to get in. I'm going to make a local copy of user and a local copy of comp. So that's my underscore in the middle. Or I mean, right before, like telling me it's a local copy. All right. So here we'll just send in a check tie. And we'll send in the user choice and the comp choice. And this is going to return true or false if it's a tie, okay? Returns true if there is a tie, false otherwise, right? So here, all we need to do is go tie equals, and then we just check, is, is the underscore user equal equal to underscore comp, right? That's the value, and then we just return the tie. Now, we don't need to save it as a variable and then return it. We can just return this, right? So we can just return the question of are they equal. If they're equal, it's a tie. And if they're not equal, it's not a tie. So that's our true or false question. It was actually the exact same thing we had here, right? You just moved it up there. And I use local variable names. Okay, and then we just print tie. And then down here, we'll say if user wins. So again, I'm going to take all this. And I'm going to say elif, check user win. And again, I'm going to send in the user and the comp. Now up here, I'm going to go um, def check user win. And again, I'm going to make a local copy and a local copy. I could use the same name, but I just want to be really clear. And here I just go returns true if the user wins, false otherwise. And so in here, all you need to do is go user wins equals, and you take those same things. The only thing is all of these are underscores, right? So underscore user. I'm going to double click that to copy the whole word. And then I'm going to go over here, paste it over this user, paste it over this user. Then I'm going to do the same thing for comp. I'll put an underscore before. I'll double click and copy, double click, paste, double click, paste. And now we'll just return user wins. Okay, so we just check if we won, right, based on the results, just as we had down below, and we return that value. All right, so I can hide that now. I can hide that. So we got check if there's a tie, check if there's a win. We're not doing any different code, but now our program looks so much cleaner. And then the one other thing I'm going to do is um, start the main game loop. Okay, for this, I will just do while true. I'm just going to trap them forever in. I'm only going to put the greeting once. Okay, and then we're going to start the main game loop, which inside the game loop, it gets the user choice. It gets the computer choice. It prints them because I'm still debugging. And then if it's a tie, if it's a win, otherwise loss. Okay, let's try it. Ready? Uh, let's go rock. Okay, now we get to play again. So it was a tie. Paper. Yes, we beat it. Player wins. Okay, and let's go scissors. Okay, oh, dang. Oh, look at that. We got the we got the tie. Player wins. Computer wins. Already happening. This is some good debugging. Okay, let's stop the video there. All we did was package up our thing into functions and add a main game loop.